Hi guys, my name is Kat. My name is Joe. Have you ever wondered where does the number pi come from? We all use it and we know that it's roughly 3.14, but how did people derive it? Today we're going to use a simple code to help us derive a digits of pi. And we're going to use this figure to help us. How it's going to work, we're going to throw a bunch of darts at this figure and I'm going to calculate the number of darts the land within the circle and the number of car, uh, darts the land within the square. N then we're going to use the ratio of the darts that fall within the circle to the total number of darts, which is the darts that fall within the square, and that's going to help us estimate what pi is. Now, to estimate how to estimate how many number uh, how many darts fall within the circle and how many darts we throw in total, we can use the area. Okay. So instead of find, to find the total number of darts and the number of darts thrown in within the circle, the ratio of that we're going to actually find the area of the circle to the area of the square. So the area of the circle is, as we know, pi r squared. And then the area of the square is the length of the side squared. Now, because our circle is within the square, the length of the square is actually going to be equal to the diameter of the circle, which is 2r. So we can write it as pi r squared to 2r squared, and that's equal to pi r squared over 4, which is 2 squared r squared. Now our r squared can get cancelled out and we get pi over 4. Now pi over 4 is actually roughly 75 percent which isn't hard to believe because we know that this ratio is supposed to be less than 1 since if we have it more than 1 then it means that the area of the circle is actually bigger than the square, which is not true since the circle is inside of the square. Now, we know that the area of the circle to the area of the square is equal to pi over 4, but how can we actually use it to find pi? Well, since we know that pi over 4 is equal to that, then all we have to do is multiply our answer, pi over 4, by 4, and we can get pi. Okay. So then how are we going to find pi using our code? So then we're going to open our code editor here. And so right now, let's just take a look at what we have here for our code. So right here we have x equals 0, y equals 0. So that's our you know, points there. Then we have n points, which is going to be our number of points, which right now we have a 0. Um, then we're going to have n points inside the circle. So that's going to be the number of points inside the circle instead of just the total number of points. Um, then we have color 1, which is black, and then we have color 2, which will be gray, which we're not actually going to use color 2 right now. Um, then we actually then we have our function uh, to draw the points. And when we're actually using this function, it's not um, just drawing the point once. It's actually going to draw points at about or draw points at 60 points per second. So it's actually not just run once, it's run repeatedly over and over. And then we have our code here to draw the point. So then if we run this. So we get our point, oh, point 0.5 away from x and point 0.5 away from y. And it's black because we chose it to be color 1, which is black. Now, this is just one point. What we need, we actually need a bunch of points generated randomly and not a specific point. We need it. And then we need to figure out which, uh, how many of them are inside of the circle and how many of them are inside of the square. So how can we randomly generate points? So then to randomly generate our points, we're going to add in this. We're going to change our x equals 0.5 times our radius and our y equals 0.5 times our radius. We're going to change this to x equals random, uh, negative radius, comma, radius, and then y equals the same thing. So when this will create the points randomly for us. So if we copy this over, and put this in our code after getting rid of our x equals 0.5 radius times the radius. 
and same thing for y. So if we put that in here, and when we paste it, we want to do control V and then we'll run this. Okay, so now we have randomly generated points and it, again, it runs 60 points per second and the longer we wait, the more we can see that it actually forms a square. So then right now we don't actually even have a circle to look at, right? We just have a square. So how are we going to draw in our circle and the code? To help, to help us, we have this piece, which is not exactly a code because instead of having variables, we have something and something else. So we need to figure out if what something is and what something else is. And then if that something is more than something else, we will know that it's inside of the circle. So we're going to make it color two, which is gray. And then otherwise, it's going to be of our other color, which is black. Mm -hmm. So let's figure out what something and something else is first.